everybody. We're live. Uh, please put in your questions. Uh, I'll be starting in just a minute or so. While we're waiting for the audio here, uh, feel free to stop in, say hello, tell me where you're from. And I'm looking forward to your questions today live for the next 30 to 40 minutes. I'm here looking forward to hearing from you. Hey, Kimberly, welcome. Everyone else is just joining us. I'm here live today to answer your questions this Friday afternoon. Um, go ahead and stop in, say hello, tell me where you're from. And I am looking forward to answering as many questions as I can in the next 30 to 40 minutes. It's great to see you all here. Please stop in, say hello, tell me where you're from. And we are live. Uh, I wanted to start while you're all popping in and saying hello with just a little bit uh, of an intro. I don't know if you've all heard, but my new book, um, Unexpected, Finding Resilience Through Functional Medicine, Science and Faith is now available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Target, anywhere you get books. Um, I am so excited for this. Um, again, if you've been following me, you know I've been working on this for a long time, literally years. And it's funny because when I went to the publisher, they said, you know, if you're an unknown relative to famous people. You can't tell your story. You can't tell a memoir. You can't write a prescriptive memoir. And I said, you know what? When we go through difficulties in life, we learn so much in the journey. I know any of you who are listening can understand this. And um, I have learned so much. I've been through cancer in my 20s and Crohn's disease and autoimmunity and mold-related biotoxin illness. And so much of what I share in my passion for helping you as friend, listener, client, patient, whoever you are out there listening to me, first of all, thank you for joining me. Stop in, say hello, tell me where you're from. But so much of what I do is um, based on the fact that I've been there. I have suffered. I've been through, lost all my hair through chemotherapy. And I just really have this depth of passion um, for bringing hope and healing to those of you who are suffering. And so I share my journey here in the book very personal, very raw, very deep into my journey, what I've learned. But the great thing is there's all these places called sidebars. I'll show you an example here where you just have really, really specific, see the sidebar here? This is a specific carbohydrate diet. So if you're suffering from Crohn's or colitis, you can see here, starts on this page. It gives you really good ideas on like what to eat, what to do, how to cure that. So lots and lots of really practical advice as well um, for you in that state. And I wanted to share as we're just, you guys are popping on here, just a couple of tips and tricks and things. I want to talk a little bit about flow, but I also, now I lost my place, <laughs> but I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, tips for reducing toxic stress. So many of us have toxic stress in our life. Now, stress can be good because it can motivate us. It can encourage us to um, rise up to the occasion, like stress is not all bad. So the truth is that stress can be good. And I want to talk a little bit about ways to reduce the toxic stress, the stuff that feels overwhelming, the things that feel like we're drowning in here. And I'm going to share that in just a minute. Continue to pop on, say hello, tell me where you're from. Um, hi, Ruth. Hi, Jeannie. Hi, Angela. Hi, Kimberly. Elizabeth. Hello. Uh, Tamara. Hello. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, keep going ahead and put your questions in now because I will get to those in just a minute. I promise I will jump right in there and get to those questions. Um, and if you do want to get your own copy, uh, I just started talking about the book. It's out March 7th. You can pre-order now. I've got tons of free bonuses, um, a free lecture, a free secret audio chapter, a free coloring journal. If you've heard me talk at all, you know how much I love coloring and how much it's helped me embrace my playful, more childlike side. It's helped me be creative with writing. And I literally created a coloring journal to go along with this. And it's yours free with the purchase. You can go to readunexpected.com. So that's readunexpected.com. And and uh, purchase from any retailer, whichever one you like. And then um, once you purchase, you can go back and get all the freebies. They're downloadable instantly. So please grab those. But anyway, today, before we start, I want to share just a little bit about reducing toxic stress. First, uh, first 
thing to do is turn it down. Um, limiting social media and news consumption is such a big deal. Years ago, I used to read the, I was in Chicago, so it's the Chicago Tribune, like cover to cover. And then one day I realized, you know, 90% of the news in the newspaper and on the television is negative or, or traumatic or difficult, you know, wars and killings and murders and all this awful stuff. And as a sensitive person, I realized, why am I putting myself through that? And I stopped watching the news and I stopped reading the newspaper. And I feel like um, it has changed my life in a really positive way. Same with social media. There's so much filters and all these things that make us feel not enough, you know, like, oh my gosh, so-and-so they live this beautiful life. And we all know that's not true. There's, you know, just these snippets from people's lives, but I think social media in general can be really discouraging. So one thing I'd encourage you to decrease toxic stress, reduce your time on the phone, scrolling through social media. Usually it just leads to dissatisfaction and then cut out the news as much as possible. Don't subject yourself to those stories. Stay present. This is so huge. And one of the reasons why I love riding my motorcycle and rock climbing and these adventurous things, because in some of these kinds of adventures, you absolutely like you're going to die if you don't stay present when you're riding your motorcycle or when you're climbing a rock. And I actually like those kinds of adventures. Maybe some of you go surfing or maybe you walk on the beach or just anything you do to stay present. Hi, Cindy. Um, and hello, Jeannie. Hello, everybody who's joining us just now. I'm just going through a couple of tips and trips and tricks in my new book to reduce stress. It's called Unexpected. You can get your copy at readunexpected.com. And then I promise I'm going to get right to your questions, but I just want to give you guys some time to pop in and say hello and then uh, put in your questions. Um, so turn it down, stay present, set boundaries. This is something I had to learn the hard way because I was terrible at setting boundaries. I was a people pleaser. How many of you raise your hand, say hello, if you're a people pleaser out there like me? I had to really learn to set boundaries um, because what happens when we're highly sensitive, we take on all that energy. And if we don't have healthy boundaries, um, then we tend to overwhelm ourselves, right? And that's toxic stress. And this can be with loved ones, family members, all kinds of people that we love in our life, but setting those healthy boundaries. And one thing that I learned that was kind of a hard lesson was I want people to be happy and I don't want to upset anyone, right? But what I learned with healthy boundaries is usually a good boundary, you're going to upset someone. And so that actually helped me set boundaries because I knew that, you know, if I set a good boundary, like, you know what? No, I'm sorry. I can't do that for you. Or no, I'm sorry. You can't stay for three weeks at my house <laughs> or whatever it is, whatever kind of boundary you set often you upset people. And just knowing that, even though I hate upsetting people was helpful because I knew, oh, this is just part of boundary setting. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Cindy. Um, move your body. This is another, I'm just talking through, if you're just joining me, tips to reduce toxic stress. One of the best ways to, we learned this with Peter Levine's work. Um, and after a trauma, often animals, they shake their bodies. If you've ever seen your dog shake, you know, after they get wet or if they come in from the snow, they'll just shake. And it's almost like shaking off that trauma. So dancing, walking, moving, hiking, these are all wonderful ways to basically discharge that stress from our bodies. If you haven't joined me on Instagram, it's Dr. Jill Carnahan. You will see a hilarious video from about a week ago where I had some girlfriends over. We all put on these silly Dr. Franz masks, which, make, which makes us look like we're like Friday the 13th characters or zombies. And then we were dancing around, like totally shuffling in my living room. And you can see that on my Instagram account, just being totally silly. But you know what? We went home that night, all of us. Um, and we just had so much joy because we were able to just be with each other um, you know, be with good friends, that company, be present and just dance and be silly. And that's a really good way to decrease toxic stress. Um, choose to surrender. This is a hard one, but what um, part of my definition of faith in this book is um, being comfortable with the inevitable uncertainty of life, of medicine, of your health, of your career, of your relationships. This is hard. Um, and that uncertainty though, is really when we get comfortable with that uncertainty and we can just surrender and trust that the divine has our back and that good things are coming. Um, this is such a powerful way to reduce stress because most of the time at the root of stress is our a desire to control, to hold tight to things and to like want to control the outcome. And uh, I am right with you. If you're resonating with that, I am a recovering control freak, recovering perfectionist. But what I've learned in life is if I really let go, um, the kinds of magic and unexpected miracles that happen usually happen when I really surrender. Even my book, I'll tell you guys, I had on my heart to write my book and my story years ago, like almost seven or eight years ago. And I had to really surrender the timetable to God and really just trust that it would work out in the right time. And here it is almost eight years later, my book is finally being published, but 
that surrender allowed me to go through so many more experiences that I can share with you, so many more difficult relationships and things that I learned along the way. And the depth of the knowledge and the richness of this book would have never been that way had I not surrendered the timetable to the divine. And had I said, oh, I've got to do this in 2016 or 18 or whatever year that I first started to think about it. I think it was 2016. So I'm just encouraging you. This is tips for my book to reduce toxic stress. Surrender is a huge, huge piece of it. Um, practice gratitude. This is a big one. Um, I just wake up every morning and life isn't always perfect, right? I'm human, just like you with suffering and difficulty. But when I wake up, I just, I'm so often like, who am I to get to live this life, to get to impact patients, to get to have friends, to get to have wonderful family. My life is not perfect by any means, but I am so grateful for the things that I have, the health, the relationships, and any of you listening know if you've struggled with losing a job, losing a loved one, um, it's hard, um, but there's always times, no matter what you're going through, where you can find things to be grateful for, and it really does shift perspective, and if any of you have been suffering from an illness, and you maybe go to the hospital one day, or you talk to someone one day, and you realize, oh my goodness, they are way worse off than me, that perspective sometimes allows you to shift and realize, you know, there's good. I remember being getting treated for cancer and being so sick. And yet I would see these people who were even more sick than I was, and they were facing, you know, even more dire straits. And that always just gave me perspective for compassion for their lot, but also just gratitude. So practice gratitude, seek sunshine. This is a pretty simple one. Um, it, unless you're in Illinois where I grew up, where it's gray for six months of the year, you know, not quite, but out here in Colorado, we have lots of sunshine. The sunshine is such an uplifter of mood. And I'll tell you what's helped me. Um, I've been wanting to get up earlier because I got in this habit of sleeping in a little bit more than I used to. My adrenals have been tired. And what I did, um, my stepdaughter, Candace got me this, um, light that's, you know, uh, sunlight. And basically I turn that on when I get out of bed at 6am and I go sit by my light artificial light, but it's like, um, it's like natural sunlight. And it's amazing what it does to your circadian rhythms. My mood changes, my, um, energy changes. It's almost as good as a cup of coffee. So those are my tips from unexpected. Stay tuned because every time I come on, I'm going to be sharing some tips from here. And if you missed the first part of this, um, you can get your own copy at readunexpected.com, um, order from any bookseller it's available now. And I've got tons of free bonuses on that page for you. Coloring journal, um, audio secret chapter recording and also a um, mass cell lecture. So lots of good stuff there. Okay. Hey, everybody, I'm going back to your questions now. You're probably like, Jill, get on with it. Let's get to our questions. Um, please stop in, say hello. Thanks for joining me and put your questions in. So let's see. Um, Ruth just asked, what kind of doctor am I? I'm a medical doctor. I'm actually trained in allopathic, you know, conventional medicine, um, but I have a much more heart of a holistic healer. I like to find ways to help you heal and transform and reverse disease instead of just using drugs and surgery. I think there's a place for that, but there's a lot more available. So I am actually a real medical doctor. Um, hi, Elizabeth. Uh, you're asking about oxalates, how they might be tied to systemic fungal infections and mold. So oxalates are super common. If any of you haven't heard the term oxalates, you can actually measure these in organic acids in your urine, order through a functional doctor and see if they're high. Now, the thing about oxalates is these are the things that cause kidney stones. So many of you who've had kidney stones might know well about these, and you might know from your doctor to reduce oxalates in your diet. But what you may not know is what Elizabeth is asking about. And that is that oxalates typically come from either fungal candida overgrowth in your body or mold exposure or mold in the body like aspergillus. Sometimes they can come from uh, things like clostridia as well, but reducing oxalates is usually going to the root. So the fungal issue or the mold issue versus just reducing oxalates in the diet. Oxalates are like little uh, shards of glass in your body. So they can contribute to fibromyalgia, to bladder pain or interstitial cystitis, to joint pain, to fatigue. I mean, they can cause all kinds of symptoms. If you can imagine having little shards of glass in your body, it's pretty painful, not very fun. And they really do produce symptoms all over the body. So reducing oxalates in the diet can help, but oxalates are in really healthy, good foods like almonds and spinach and blueberries. So I generally recommend don't cut them out. And if you do cut them out, you're going to feel a lot worse because you're going to be dumping oxalates. You may just want to reduce by 10 or 20% um, your oxalate consumption and then root work on the root cause and try to get that oxalate load down by treating the underlying fungal or mold um, overgrowth. 
Great question, Elizabeth. Um, hi, Patrick. Can mold excrete its on its own without binders? So yes, our body is created without binders, without glutathione. Uh, first of all, we produce glutathione, but without any binders, we do go through the process of uh, phase one, phase two in the liver, excreting those toxins in the bile and excreting them out through the bowel. Sometimes we sweat them out. There's many ways. So we do naturally excrete toxins without binders, but Here's the deal, your enterohepatic circulation, what that means is that's the reabsorption. So bile secreted from the gallbladder to help emulsify fats in the small bowel, but it also contains cholesterol and contains um, mycotoxins and different toxins. It's one of our storage places for toxic load. So when that bile goes into the intestine, it does some good things for our gut. It helps you know, digest fats, it helps sterilize the small bowel. However, if um, we're just letting it go without binders, we're very efficient at reabsorbing that bile, like up to 95%. So it's like a merry-go-round. If we don't use binders, we're more likely to just reabsorb that toxic load. And especially if you're prone to constipation or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So I'm a huge fan of binders because it basically grabs with an electrostatic charge, those toxins and helps escort them out through the stool. So you get increased efficiency of getting rid of the toxic load. So that's a great question. Hi, Elizabeth, again, thanks for sharing. Oh, thanks for, you're welcome. Thank you guys for listening. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Janice. Um, if you treat Markans, will it help with math? Um, she's asking if Markans treating will help with um, chemical sensitivity. So this is a little tricky. Markans is an infection that um, coag negative staph that gets in the nose, uh, often with a mold exposure. It can be from other causes. And for years and years with uh, like Shoemaker protocol, we would try to eradicate the Markans in the nose. Um, we can use compounded silver spray. You may have heard of BEG, which is a compounded antibiotic spray with EDTA. EDTA is a natural chelating biofilm disruptor. And part of the reason that's so important to clear out the Markans from the sinuses is Markans itself will cause the MSH in your pituitary to drop. MSH is incredibly important for gut integrity. We saw studies in mice that showed low MSH was associated with development of inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's and colitis and many, many other symptoms. It also makes um, dysregulation of your hormones worse, like aromatase upregulation with um, excess estrogen, um, issues with adrenals and thyroid. So this MSH, uh, melanocyte stimulating hormone, is often uh, very low due to the Marcons. So eradicating Marcons in that sense is very helpful. But many of the docs like myself and others um, at ICI, one of the great organizations of docs treating mold, uh, we believe that you do not have to eradicate Marcons in order for a patient to get well. But your question, Jeannie, is will it help with uh, chemical sensitivity? Really any lowering of the toxic load and lowering of infectious burden will help chemical sensitivity. But I would say just treating Marcons may or may not make a direct big difference for um, multiple chemical sensitivity. Hi, Cindy from Pennsylvania. Tamara, what would you advise a person that has mast cells so bad they've stopped tolerating most foods, react to everything, clothes, bed linens? Um, oh gosh, this is so sad and so true. She's feel like she's been gaslighted by most doctors, even her family. Okay, so Tamara, this is a great question. And first of all, to your friend, or if any of you listening are suffering from that, I am so sorry. Uh, this is such a difficult thing. And Literally, this is one of the reasons why the docs like myself who treat mold and Lyme and mast cell activation, we always start with the mast cell activation because this is such a key in order for us to be able to even tolerate, you know, foods or basic types of supplements or nutrition. So the biggest thing I think here is our limbic system. We obviously can have trauma and other things that activate our limbic system to fight or flight. And treating that may be the first step for someone like this without any supplements or any herbs or anything like that. And it's not her fault, but what happens is that chemical inhalation of, of different chemicals or molds will actually trigger the limbic system independently of any trauma. So what I've experienced is all patients who've had mold or mast cell activation have some degree of limbic activation and trauma just from the chemical response in the limbic system. So the first step I would do is any sort of limbic retraining. Um, there's programs out there like Gupta program, Annie Hopper's DNRS. Those are the two most popular, but um, Porges, Stephen Porges has a safe and sound protocol. You can do cranial sacral therapy. You can do thought field therapy. You can do EMDR. You can do binaural beats, which is a type of music that changes hurts on right and left ear and tends to calm the nervous system. One of my new favorites is brain tap. And if you haven't uh, seen my interview on my YouTube channel with Dr. Porter, this is a great interview. He's the founder of brain tap. And it talks a lot about that 
And uh, you could do heart math, which is heart rate variability training. You could do neuro um, linguistic programming or NLP. And I could go on and on, but some form that fits with you uh, for limbic retraining would be essential in someone like this. And then the other thing is um, the nutrition that she needs. Often just basic nutrition is impaired because they have trouble. Like you said, um, if you get a copy of my book, you'll notice one of my favorite things and most sad, precious things in this book is the preface. I treated a girl named Alex and um, she passed away in her twenties. It's such a sad story, but one of the reasons I love telling your story is because she was transformed in the process and has gone on before her death to create a Lyme foundation and to help people suffering with mast cell. And I love telling your story because she lives on through her foundation. And she was someone like that, that suffered with such, such severe mast cell activation that she literally couldn't get nutrition and she passed away. So this is very serious. And um, my heart absolutely goes out to your friend, Tamara. Hi, Cindy. Whitewater rafting. Now, I think this is a um, court. I was talking about stress and ways to adapt to stress and um, uh, be present. And you think you're mentioning whitewater rafting. That sounds like fun. I'm here in Colorado. So I have gone before, but it's been years. I think, Cindy, I'm going to take you up on that this summer and we'll have to go whitewater rafting. Hi, Sandy from Colorado. Um, Katie. Hi, Katie. Severe OCD and anxiety from Bartonella and Lyme. Um, would an SSRI be safer than Ativan? Um, so, uh, Katie. Uh, OCD from Bartonella is really common and it's a really tricky thing. In fact, I just read on one of the um, newsletter reports that OCD is the seventh leading cause of dis disability among all illnesses, including like cancer and heart disease and autoimmunity. So when you suffer with OCD, it's absolutely can be uh, debilitating. So first of all, I'm so sorry for, for that for you. Um, SSRIs can be very powerful. It depends on the person, but serotonin and I have had many clinical cases that respond incredibly well to SSRIs, um, especially, you know, Lexapro or some of the more mild uh, Zoloft and um, well, Butrin could go either way because it's also a dopamine antagonist, but I would absolutely talk to your doctor about that because I think that might be a really good place to start. Um, there are natural ways to increase serotonin, like giving uh, P5P or B6 or 5-HTP or tryptophan. But again, you'd want to talk to your doctor about the other meds you're on and how that would interact and uh, make sure you're doing something safe. Hi, Jillian. What's your best advice for someone who has severe and multiple chemical sensitivity? So that's what I just answered about the limbic system and the limbic activation, because this is getting more and more common. The thing that underlies the chemical sensitivity is that our toxic load, our bucket, you probably heard me talk about that it starts to get full and spill over. And then that presents with symptoms and signs of disease and illness. And so this is one of those things where we need to decrease that toxic load. But the first step is calming that limbic system down because so often it's in such overdrive that anything is difficult to tolerate. Hi, Ruth. Free thyroxine is slightly low. What can cause this? So that's free T4. Um, that would be a, a thyroid hormone. If that's low in your blood, that means you're hypothyroid. So the best thing um, you can, tyrosine and iodine are precursors to thyroid. So you could try that. But in someone like that, if it's really been low on, you know, more than one reading, um, thyrox, a levothyroxine uh, would be a great choice. My favorite form of levothyroxine is a new uh, form called tyrosine. The reason is, is because it's just pure T4 with MCT oil. It's about the cleanest form of thyroid you can get. I've been switching most all my patients from other brands and kinds to that because it works so well with guts and issues like that. It's just very highly absorbable. But again, talk to your doctor, Ruth. I'm not giving medical advice. Um, if it's low, you probably need medication. And I'm going to try to get a couple more questions before the top of the hour. Um, hi, Ruth. Let's see. We talked about your question. Uh, Lauren, hello. Migrating tooth pain and sensitivity on the right side, um, Lyme co-infections and mold. So migrating, there may be a lot of people have cavitations or hidden infections in the jaw, um, whether there's an old root canal or some sort of cavitation area where bacteria can still be. I would go to your dentist and get a cone CT, which is an imaging to look for cavitations and start there because that's often the issue. Um, if there's a cavitation, you need cavitation surgery and that will really help. Uh, Renea, I'm sorry, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. What best binders to use? Um, so I love clay and charcoal. Um, I've got a new binder that I really like because it's got a little bit of zeolite, which is extra good for heavy metals and really gentle. Um, if you go to my website, drjillhealth.com and just look for Zeobind Plus, Z-E-O-B-I-N-D plus. It's a really great binder that kind of combines the best of everything. And I feel like it's gentle enough for almost anyone to start. Um, usually you would take like two caps and an empty stomach once or twice a day, but that's probably my new favorite. 
um, but plain old charcoal can work too. Uh, Deanna, hello. How do I treat patients going through chemotherapy treatments? Um, okay, that's tough. Chemotherapy, I've been there in my 20s. I went through three drug chemotherapy with my breast cancer. It was incredible, to incredibly toxic and it disrupted my gut, caused massive pain, it caused hair loss. I mean, I was really, really sick. So I'm sorry if you're going through that right now, depending on what kind of chemo, it can be really, really toxic and detrimental to rapidly dividing cells, which means your ovaries, your testes, your skin, your gut, um, all kinds of things in your hair. Uh, so first thing is I would just support, I would not do any detox or any major treatment during chemo. It's just too much for your body. But what you could do is something like L-glutamine to support the gut. Um, butyrate is also supportive for the gut. Things that are just supportive and gentle. I would make sure you're eating easy di to digest foods like low in sugar, but easy to digest even like rice or quinoa or roasted vegetables or soups. Um, just be nourishing to your body during that time. And then later when you're done, you can heal the gut and you can work on detox. Hi, Lewis. Uh, what would you recommend for central sensitization syndrome? Okay. So this is also kind of an activation of the nerves where you get some chronic pain and sensitization. And sometimes you can even have, you know, phantom pain where there's no uh, logical explanation. Um, but this is, again, this is a loop, the limbic loop, the system, the nervous system gets in a track where it's, you know, using, ha has that pain and a difficult to, um, I would look at underlying causes for that. So it's hard to explain here because there's many, many different things, but toxic load like mold and infectious load like Lyme, Bartonella, Babesia, those are big on my list to make sure um, if someone has central sensitization, if they have small fiber neuropathy, or if they have um, autoimmune encephalopathy, these are all big terms, but they're like nervous system dysfunction and pain. Um, I would check for underlying Lyme and co-infections. Thanks, Deanna. Love brain tap. And you're welcome, Katie. Thank you, Tamara. Thank you, Jillian. Um, and uh, one last question, Ruth's asking about armor. I think this because I, I mentioned the T4 low. So if you're, this is a great question. So I'm assuming Ruth, I may have this wrong, but it's a good question for everybody because they might relate. Um, if you're checking your labs and you're on armor or WP thyroid or natural thyroid or any sort of glandular, um, it has a set ratio of T3 and T4, and it's not a bad option. Many people are on that but it's not a physiological human uh, ratio. It's from pig, usually porcine sort, porcine source. So because of that, often your ratios of T3 or T4 are not um, right. Your T4 will be too low. And that's what it sounds like you're seeing, Ruth. You might want to switch to tyrosine or plain T4. And most of my patients I have on either uh, tyrosine or T4, which is that highly absorbable MCT-based thyroid medication that I love, um, and some sort of T3. And I actually then can manipulate the T3, T4 to be exactly what that individual needs. And I've actually had much better luck with that combination than a natural thyroid, because that pig thyroid, even though it's good, it's clean, it's a great source is not human as far as the ratios. So I'd recommend talking to your doctor about that. Um, I just got to keep going. One more question. Um, High cholesterol and recent gallbladder removal, bile salts to help. Yeah. So if you had your gallbladder removed, you don't have the sac that stores the bile acids and you still drip bile acid from the common bile duct. But what you, what you want to do is make sure that you do have bile production. Um, and so what you can do is take bile salts. Um, often I'll give like betaine with pancreatin with bile acid salts or a combo. And especially if you have diarrhea or maldigestion or indigestion, those can be helpful. Now I will say some people react and get heartburn or get irritation in their gut from bile salts. So just try them and see. And if you get irritation, you'd want to stop. So, oh gosh, today I, I would love to go on and on everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me. Um, I hope you'll continue putting in comments. I can come back later and uh, make some, you know, answer those for you. Join me again. I'll be back next month. I'll be posting the date. Um, and in the meantime, if you haven't heard, go on over to readunexpected.com, grab a copy of my new book and um, lots of love to each of you today. Thanks so much for joining me.